I would like to. S- I th- I, th- I think what's happening now is w- what's been revealed is both the barbarity and the human possibility left existing, bare standing in our society. And I think if this logic is to continue the way we've outlined it, going through each of these seven moments, that barbarism will become more stark. I think I saw in someone put up one of the one of the papers, the BBC, because. It's shilling hard for Johnson at the moment. Um, ever since it, uh, ever since it made a stand against him before the election. Sit, boo, sit. Yeah. So it, 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 the headline read like uh, five hundred billion. Uh, the government's about to take a five hundred billion loan, and it's just sort of like preparing for this. You know, we thought the last austerity round was going to be rough. This, the next round of austerity, um, preparing the population for that, I guess. And um, yeah, so this is this is what we're facing. The you know whatever whatever I, th- I think of course in the UK at least the the sanctity of the NHS has been given a boost by our current situation, but the realities, like the realities for the last number of decades, the realities of how of how that sort of organization is governed and it that the institutional makeup of it how that's formed what goes on behind the scenes let alone the figures of money that any given government can give it in any budget how it's run um it's essentially privatized and the further that private privatization is literally the 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 earth has wealth the earth has people on it the people need wealth to live um public wealth is the fucking wealth in the earth beside the people extracted by a large organization and distributed to it uh private wealth is where someone comes along as simple as the commons back in last uh four nights four nights ago chat uh, and taking it so when a fucking government does that they're fucking taking it that's that's all that's happening there's no fucking claim over it what claim? It's public. Oh, it was an agreement. Ah, oh, the government made an agreement. And it's going to be amazing because just like John Locke's theory property, these people, the masters of capital, are so fucking good at it that they'll make more wealth. Yeah, it's, they're, the, they're the specialists in this they're regard, aren't they? They're, they're the ones in the know. Yeah. and for experts, that we'll the let them take it all expert. yeah um, because they have we, we would have no idea where to even start um, you know like that's that's I mean that's and that's the thing I, I have had this conversation with Oliver people. hang on a second women don't know how to give birth to babies you fool no we need experts not. yeah sorry for cutting across you no, no, no. You, uh, you were right to. You were right to. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was starting down a dark path um, criticizing people. Um, uh, I've lost my train of thought. Can I trip no. you up? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, not at all. No, no, no. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, we, we take a back seat with this, with, with any of these sort of, uh, with any of these things. And we, because we are so ground down by the idea that we either, um, we're either, I think, again, sort of, you feel the, the, uh, the outcome of the entrenched logic. Like, like, again, this stuff that I think we've talked about in various chats where we've had talks uh, either with, you know, just, just peer groups or, or other people just about stuff where I've, I mean, I know personally, I've had people come back to me and say, yeah, but like, you know, I don't want to, you know, uh, nobody, like, sorry, they, it's not someone saying I don't want to have to do that, but it's like, nobody will want to, you know, make decisions in their lives, like democratically, like, we, you know, I mean, a lot of stuff we want, but yeah, yeah. no one's going to want to go the extra mile. Work. Like, yeah. And it's sort of like, well, whoa, hang on. Where? regardless of whether that's true <laughs> first of all it's like how do you get to that place how are you getting to that assumption and the only way that i after again you know after we've been devouring this work um this body 
of work and, 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 and talking it through is like, in my head, I, I can't trust sometimes that these people have even thought these comments through. Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's the logic being vocalized. Um, the common sense. It's, sorry, yes, uh, the common sense um, being vocalized. It's the assumption on the part of the greater part of whatever we consider to be society as not wanting to take, uh, you know, various, um, to take an active role, say, in community, democratic organization uh, across a flat um, sort of structure. Like, it's, 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 it's this assumption that nobody wants to do that. It's, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's the same assumption that comes with um, laziness and automation that yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. assumes just because everything's aut- automated means we'll all get inherently lazy. It, you know, it's a, it's a liberal conspiracy. Uh, I, I saw this put somewhere amazingly and I've never been able to find it again. I really should. Uh, and it was in a totally different sort of um, sphere of, of subject, but uh, there's a myth that um that we just that we like we don't we don't want to do that uh, nobody wants to do that um there's someone else there for us and to do it and for us and if and if like you coming along and saying that you just you're just making a mess you're kicking up the dirt god I'm like do you really do we have to like i've i've got i've got the playstation like it's on pause it's gonna yeah. after five minutes it, stops automatically yeah. like let's let's just and and in actual fact like you you brought up this sort of the the, the, the same side of the um or the same um coin different sides the, the the myth of laziness um it's like well that's that's lazy <laughs> you know like the the laziness is in the belief uh, that people have taken that we don't need to be political and that politics has been solved by the fall of the berlin wall and by um by social liberalism, as as move put it, um, capitalism with a smile, and that experts will are there for us. But like that, it, ever since that moment, it's been privatization, privatization, privatization. It's pure theft, like, um, which leads us to. Oh no, actually, it doesn't because because that's the uh, barbarism is the is the the continued process um undermining a person any given person like if you collect enough people you're bound to come across in terms of a majority the person when i that i mean when i say a person's <laughs> ability <laughs> for social reproduction um the the access to public health Help public health, the access to diminishingly public health, um, the access to food, shelter, housing. Uh, heard I don't know what channel um, Kay was listening to earlier, but they were talking about, and I thought the issue was in Dublin alone this time around. But uh, student housing in Cork, like just students going to Cork uh, to University College Cork and just sleeping in cars and on the streets and stuff, and then going into college the next day. It's like, Jesus. hello, that, that's, that's, a, that's a system that is failing. Um, and that's, that's, that's getting off lightly. That person's going to fucking college, like, you know, they're not, they're, they don't have four kids hanging out of their ass, and they still don't have a place to live, you know. Um, healthcare, um, shelter, food, access to all these things, the more this cycle, the logic of capitalism was there um, 50, 60 years ago, but it was met by social democracy. It was met by a strong response by a state who I think, what, I, I, oh, geez, this was amazing. I think I retweeted this a while ago, but uh, a few days ago, but like the makeup of um, parliament in like the 60s or early 70s or whatever, it was full of teachers, it was full of miners, it was full of engineers, it was full of like working class people and yeah. that's just I don't, is that the case I, I assume it's not um because because you know Cor- corbin probably was nowhere ne- near as radical uh, relatively speaking from this point of view as the things that those people were struggling for through parliament 
and it wasn't given the time of day. Um, so I think, yeah, barbarism, this logic will continue and things will get more and more difficult in terms of our, our daily life, in terms of, like, I don't want to say normal person, average person, whatever, but this is essentially what we're talking about. Um, and I think the socialist alternative, the necessary, the logical, the rational fucking alternative is to publicize, to make public this well, to re-nationalize. I mean, at the moment, we have to work in terms of the nation state. Um, but yeah, we desperately need to, like, the, like back to the NHS, that needs serious fundamental overhaul in terms of its governance structure. And, and if you tweet that, Someone will come, some jackass will come along and go, oh, you're, I think Ash Sarkar was saying stuff, similar lines. And her, the response to the reactionary body on Twitter gave her was like, you're a medical expert now. It doesn't take a medical expert to say, see this. No, no. I uh, actually, I had a conversation with, some, with somebody not long ago um, around the, uh, the ideas of, I think I need, I need to fact check this because this was something new to me because I'm not entirely well clued in on some of the, uh, some of the positions held here in, in Spain. But I think it was somebody had mentioned that the, um, the, um, someone involved in the ministry of equality had gone from a position at a, now I, I do bear a, I do. I'm. I'm taking this, you know, lightly. I'm treading quite lightly on this, on this, uh, this, this uh, sure. anecdote, simply because I, I need to really double check it. But um, the way it was sort of explained to me was this person had gone from working in essentially a, a, a like a, a large chain store, like a kind of frozen food, like an Iceland kind yeah. of thing, um, to working with the Ministry of Equality. And I, I found this baffling, but obviously very inspiring because <laughs> I thought, F- fucking A. Social mobility. Yeah. I was just no, like, kidding. that's that. Well, I was just like, that's, that's, that's cool. Um, mm-hmm. Let's, let's examine why that happened, what they do, uh, you know, and also I'm really fucking glad that there's still that opening. Yeah. Um, you know, f- uh, and, and the, the retort then was simply that, you know, uh, it takes experts uh, to do this, to work these kind of positions and that it, and, and in my head, the, the logic, you know, what qualifies an expert. Well, my, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm, I left the conversation in my head with that very question thinking um, what stops this person from being an expert in, in human, human relationships uh, in, in, in Receiving understanding the like, is it what ten thousand hours to become an expert? To, to, yeah. I'm sure they have ten thousand hours of being treated like fucking muck because yeah. of a lack of equality. And again, Expertise. that ab- that ability to recognise that in other people and to create um, for yourself and hopefully expand it outwards that sense of um, you know inherent compassion. Uh, Am I saying that correctly? Yes, compassion that we can have for one another and do, and we find Absolutely. in one another beautifully intertwined in the maddest fucking way sometimes. Just this incredible ability to have compassion for other struggling humans because whether or not we actually went through the an equivalent struggle, um, we can look and say, I recognize that yeah. as a struggle, and I too have struggled. And it's not about elevating them into say, I guess where you are, but elevating that person out of that struggle. And quite frankly, if somebody was going into an organization that had some kind of government, uh, you know, involvement where they went in to work a high, you know, an important post in an organization with that in mind, I'd rather have that person there as a specialist, Absolutely. as the expert, than somebody who's going in there thinking, "Cool, how can I, how can I flip a dime on this?" Yeah, you know, yeah. W- what's the benefits package like? You know, it's <laughs> like, um, but yeah, leaving it, uh, you know, uh, coming away with that that question in my head has uh, was was an intense one, and you know, I uh, 
there's a strange sort of way the this kind of logic we've been discussing or the themes of this sort of logic that have been presenting themselves during specifically during this um this period of time it's, this is relating to your points about the nhs and i was having a very long conversation um uh with with, with some people about this um with regards to you know this this wonderful flux of um of of, of acts of charity that we're seeing based from people now i'm i don't look that stuff uh you know as being you know oh you piece of shit for the fuck you donating one of your billions but but at the same time <laughs> right you know i'm just kind of like no 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 great absolutely fantastic wish you'd been you know wish we lived in a system however where that didn't need to be the way the the, the wealth was redistributed because yeah. that because that dries up and what we and my argument has always or my argument in that particular conversation was as you said it's it's not we don't need more people donating um a finite amount we need a restructured um way of that wealth having been redistributed in the first place so that these institutions much like the nhs aren't suffering aren't severed from the resources they need yeah. It's not, you know, the acts of kindness are lovely, but at the same time, you know, um, does that stop me instantly in my tracks from being critical of how uh, Bezos has accumulated and hoarded his wealth? Absolutely yeah. not. It seems, it seems redundant to think that that's how we fix the system. However, the logic dictates that, you know, that's, or maybe more the common sense, sorry, not the logic, the common sense. Yeah. Pe we, we look at this as much as, as in much in the same way that I think we buy um, bamboo straws. Yeah. And, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. and then, and then suddenly we give our neighbor a load of shit because they didn't fucking separate the cans. And it's a case of saying, no, no, don't like this. The, the idea that buying into exactly the same system that is mostly causing the problem and then assuming that it, it has, there's some kind of elevation that's happened there. Um, I feel it's the exact same common sense that says we, you know, but they can't be billionaires aren't bad people because look, that guy gave that guy gave 4.5 million to, yeah, to yeah. whatever. Cause I don't think these things, these char charities, so to speak, are ever actually explained. Um, and half the time, if you follow them all the way back, they usually have something involved in the charity themselves. If if I'm wearing my conspiratorial hat, but sorry, just to add to your <laughs> point, the um, yeah, the the it's 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 a redundant kind of uh, idea to have that this in any way, shape, or form uh, negates the fact that we need a radical restructuring um, of how these these institutions are governed, as you said. Um, and I think that like there's a beautiful like I I think. Sorry, it's just one thing that I still keep coming back to. And again, I feel a little um, disconnected from, from British news at the moment, but, but bar between my, my friends and family. Um, because it's just, you know, between, between living, as you know, living in other countries, suddenly you're trying to juggle all the news and there's only so much depression you can have in one day like, before you just eventually fall asleep. Yeah, um, three shots, four shots. Go on, yeah. please. And, um, and so the... Um, one number that has stood out to me in such a huge amount, and I, I think it's just the pure uh, that that going back to that that topic of compassion that I was talking about, and like the optimist in me looks at that number of the people who had um, opted to volunteer yeah, absolutely in the UK. Um, I don't know if that was directly to the NHS or was that was that was that just in various different ways. It was in the first day or first moments it was uh three quarters of a million but i think over a while it was uh and to the nhs yeah uh a million and a half i think um that's that like in this battle and people don't have to agree with me but like where i am and where i've been for the last sort of half a year like there's no essentializing you can't if you if you are to essentialize something you don't do it in a total way uh but it, it's often handy to essentialize something to, in terms of conceive it and to think past it in many respects. But essentially, um, the sort of philosophy, that the antagonistic um, philosophical issue is between 
for me, and like I said, no one's got to agree with this, is between an appreciation for human vulnerability and an absolute disregard for it. And not because you're a bad person, but because you believe that human vulnerability can be overcome uh, through struggle, individual struggle, individualized struggle. Whereas with an appreciation of human vulnerability, you um, the idea of struggle is collectivized. Um, and I think to essentialize the left and the right, I mean, well, that's how I might at the moment essentialize it. And to talk of the social democratic common sense and the neoliberal common sense, um, social solidarity and total suspicion of uh, welfare recipients, that instance signifies exactly what you were talking about, the inherent um, the inherent capacity, the, the spirit of solidarity still exists. It's been trampled to fuck for 40 years, but it's alive and well in that figure. And the reason, I think, the reason that, um, that, that, that so many people were inspired to, to do that, to break from that daily laziness that we were talking about as well, um, oh, someone else will do this. I don't want to have to think about this. Because the, the media was presenting human vulnerability on a continual basis, that is novel. I mean, <laughs> a week or so later, last week, the um, the Sun's headline was "Pubs will stay closed till Christmas," and a small little blue star beside it. Oh, and six hundred and fifty people just died uh, in the last twenty four hours, uh, or eight hundred or whatever it was. Um, that's an example of of um, suppressing. Uh, human vulnerability, the reporting of human vulnerability, the reflection of human vulnerability. Mm -hmm. But before that moment, it was an intense reflection. That human vulnerability existed long before, <laughs> forever, long before uh, this this crisis. And if the press, if the press ever took the time to accurately reflect, reflect that, then I don't see why people wouldn't be continuously inspired. To, to to be inspired or moved to uh, to sort of um, see that perhaps this was the way sort of forward that 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 um that would be worthwhile volunteering on such a mass scale to alleviate human suffering um, and that was going to lead to Jeff Bezos, but I can't remember why. So we'll move swiftly along to, oh, um, just to sign off on that point, of course, we already have the perfect exemplary uh, case of barbaric situation for social reproduction, and that is the United States of America, where health fees are destroying families and their lives. Um, so we want the other, please. Um, full and free public health. Why the fuck not? Um, institutional, legal, and governmental arrangements. So returning to that that volunteer body, I think, is a really good part. The um, with this with this respect, we have a legal situation like we've already described that, if sustained, will allow the institution and governmental arrangements to continue along this pathway to barbarism. Um, corporations have turnovers higher than, or wealth bases higher than, um, than many countries. Um, with the capitalist logic, this is where the power resides. Um, Back to Bezos, uh, him his firing of of um, staff members of late for uh, for trying to organise um, employees to uh, along along the lines of um, their actual existing rights um, uh, was illegal. the The firing was illegal. It was against the the local laws and regulations. And uh, who gives a shit? 
<laughs> who gives a shit so um th this we're still on the path to barbarism here um the, the the legal institutions that while yes they emphasize the protection of uh private property they that i mean labor is property uh they, they, the welfare of the individual is still like is still protected under the legal system but because of the institutional and governmental arrangements where gov where national states are suppressed by private um powerful private lobbies um there's different ways of defining institutions, but this is certainly one of them, the deeper, less formal institution of fucking giving a shit about people is being suppressed by this process uh, where governments are being diminished by, by governments and the legal through, this, through, the, through the total ineffectiveness of that legal uh, situation. The new institutional of not giving a shit about people is being enacted and um and like as, as we touched on in the last two chats we're moving here towards a sort of um a neo-feudalism uh amazon is extracting rents rather than wealth from innovative and efficient production um they are being barbarous to their employees. They're extracting wealth through extra economic means in that sense. Um, in the wider system, people becoming so indebted that uh, accumulation through um, dispossession, while it's economic, is veering towards like a degree of We, we might we might have said this before we hit record, but the um, whereas a capitalist system will uh, will always boom and bust, um, any capitalist economist will will agree that in in a bust you, you throw cash at the situation, in a boom you extract the cash, but neoliberalism has come to such a point where in the last 10 years in in a bust the wealth is extracted even further it's just not capitalism that's punitive that's extra economic or veering towards it like what, what's the economic sense or at least what's the capitalist economic sense there there is none um this is the, sort of the barbaric situation this along this moment that we're that we're moving towards and i think um I don't know, is it, is it, oh yeah, yeah. So the, the first sort of like the ideal the socialist sort of alternative in terms of the governmental arrangement, um, that body of volunteers, um, Fisher and Mouffe talked about the, um, not the withering of the state, but living state, being state, becoming state, um, instead of bureaucratization, democratization, seeing state as branches of functions that you can that are localized but if you if you sort of um allow access to those local public services say for instance corbyn got in things were renationalized public services were were fit for purpose once more properly funded then local like this the service users in any given situation were given access to the to 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 running those services okay. um this is that body of volunteers so through that human compassion driven to to volunteer but um the base so th i mean 1.5 million uh, is, a, is a heavily expanded base so imagine that across many frontiers just expand the base of volunteers the body of volunteers and then invert it democratize the access to provisions that they have so that they're not just merely helping agencies run them, but actually running them themselves. And oh. you've got a situation where communities are the state where you've, where, where state was a collectivized block of power has been drawn down and is now being, that's the state, what you imagine as a nation state is now just a federation of community states being run by people I mean, of course, there's networks of community, or networks of communication that will sort of 
replicate a hierarchical situation. I would imagine you, you've still got to, um, there still has to be national level organization. Um, but this is, the, this is the alternative logic that you run to sort of, to, to, to move along that moment mm-hmm. uh, to, to achieve your fundamental change. Labor processes and production of specific goods, geographies, services, or effects. In terms of barbarism, again, we've touched on it already. We're veering, veering towards it. We're not quite there. Like workers aren't being beaten the way they were. Wealth isn't being extracted from them through utter force. I mean, there's definitely slavery, but I'm not sure it's within the capitalist system. It's not mainstream. Sure, it's always, it's yeah, I mean, it, the or at least the way I guess it's kind of presented to us, it's still sort of, it's still kind of on the fringes. Of course, Hegel would argue that it is, it is capitalism. It's within the system, the, the world system, capitalism, or anything, the, the yeah. total society, uh, it's happening. Therefore, it's, whatever whatever thing is taking responsibility for the totality of society Hmm. uh, it is part of that but not necessarily labor processes yeah it's not a normalized thing like they still they 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 still recognize it as bad optics i guess (laughs) they'll do it they just don't tell anyone they just yeah they're just like no no we do need dedicated pr to like say that we're not doing this stuff for sure not (laughs) generalized um, yeah, they haven't. They they haven't just full on given in and said, "Yeah, we're fine with this." Fuck it. But they might. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's more seriously, um, it, it, it if yeah, I mean sweatshops is a barbaric labor process. Um, the conditions that we hear reports of and from East Asia, Southeast Asia. Um, I I suppose if we were to imagine, assuming that this moment was some sort of normality, enough people are accepting of that they don't challenge the status quo, which is the case. how would we imagine the process becoming more barbaric? And I think, I mean, automation displaces the possibility of a labor process. Um, The geographic, the geographic uh, production chain could be, could be organized probably a little bit more securely, a little bit better. Um, it seems quite precarious. Um, and I think, no, I don't think I'd go so far as to say that production, that like the sort of the, the manner of production um, might change. It might, but it's a, it's a, it's a huge stretch. Um, it's a huge stretch of sort of outline. So I think focusing, focusing on how, how basically labor processes in the privileged Europe and America might deteriorate to the point where the global economy and it leaving perhaps automation aside where the global economy becomes fully barbaric in terms of um, in terms of those labor processes, and it's the first point or the first moment in that is probably how consumption in 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 the West is uh, fueled by credit, and if if that credit ever dries up, because I think the assumption is that um, in economic theory at the moment it's a spiral of production phases and um, like a corkscrew and um, you you're sort of the economic center produces something novel and they produce it and it leads the way in that line of production um, 
and and anyone in that core in that center is is set to work producing it and everyone becomes flush in that moment in or in the wake of that moment in that period uh, in that area and um when a new productive tier something is invented say um becomes established there because of because of the advantage they already have their the capital that's amassing gets invested into expansion um once that happens the people working on the previous production line uh, move up and the corkscrew pushes forward and another area gets the um the the previous production and of course that's less paid now because it's not the cutting edge of production um and that series goes on and on uh so at the moment you've got like sort of us sprung out i mean they always have been but say they sprung out of like um the tech bubble silicon valley um the west was able to capitalize on it uh they followed it along and pushing on forward asia got in on that production line as as um production in the lower echelons of that line of production became cheaper or whatever um i didn't make the theory <laughs> so in the theory there's a bottleneck at the moment where in the global economy the left sort of turn the, the 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 remaining turn of the corkscrew will include africa the continent uh, in the same way that asia boomed in the last quarter of a century and this moment this movement is predicated on the the cutting edge which you would assume they assume will be america um inventing something new so at the moment the global economy is being taken over on it tech and um you know withholding um whatever the the iphone fucking 25000 has already been invented but won't be released for 25000 years because small little fucking innovations will be released every year and it's just this kicking a dead horse because there's nothing else that there's no other tech that has been developed to be diffused throughout a commercial market yet um so the economy's quite stagnant this is why this we're in a low growth moment and there's no growth necessarily foreseen because for growth to be like, like we, if we're all ants, we're fucking dormant as fuck because we're waiting to come across the next pile of sugar to just to assimilate, to get real busy on. And, um, and we just haven't got one yet. So at the moment, because Europe and America are so used to being at the top of this production chain, the powers that be in terms of the economy are extending us continual lines of credit um, to to keep us sort of to keep our faith in the system to to stop us from asking questions about ah are we what are we really doing here so you know it's assumed that whatever debt is incurred eventually are the the high the high wage labor that we have, the high skill labor that we have, the um, will will get to work on the next sugar cube, and um, all those debts will be repaid, and uh, the, everything will just like the the blood will recirculate and the body will come back to life, and everything will go on as it was. But um, without without that innovation, the diffusion of any innovation, uh, we're 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 at a bottleneck, and. Um, the longer that goes on uh, the more precarious work will become um i mean i think i think the the school system that michael gove put in place in the uk here a while ago emphasizing stem or maths and english or whatever is this really sort of dickensian school system really like sort of you good yeah, sorry, I was just during my throat. Fun, like just super functionalist. Uh, it seemed to me that it was like it's going to sacrifice the same way that I described there. It's going to sacrifice generations of school children who aren't suited to this, and they'll just be like, yeah, yeah. They'll just rebound off this core thrust of the system, and they'll fall wherever because there's nothing else for them to do. So it doesn't really matter. We don't really need to educate them. Was this the the same system? Sorry, did he implement the same? Was I reading? Was, sorry, 
was it his uh, implementation that there was kind of like a decrease in um, uh, any kind of modules or classes based around citizenship and education? So the same reduction same in everything life. other than yeah. um, maths, English, mm. science, and technology. Right. The gamble mm. based on this theory, or what you might conclude from this theory and this policy is that they're throwing the lot in on the possibility on attempting to increase the possibility of one producing one steve jobs for the uk the one one innovator that will create an industry that all of a sudden will inflate the economy will breathe life into it and and the likelihood is of course this will just be through science and technology or whatever yeah. um that 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 every all the children who fully failed in that system the system fully failed them uh all their families who incurred debt for those decades at this stage um they the, the the people who will work for this burgeoning industry from this one person that they're waiting to just occur um will resubstantiate all that credit like we, we we're, we're, people are basically getting lines of credit not based on their own um collateral but based on the possibility of the national collateral in the future through this policy sort of yeah. idea yeah. the longer it goes on the more precarious it becomes we're seeing um obviously the, in the last decade or so um precarious work increasingly i mean i assume systematically people are just like policy makers are juggling the situation it's just like oh fuck we'll throw a line of credit here we'll spin this line there and just hopefully people it won't just deteriorate but if nothing happens it quite possibly will deteriorate um and 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 labor processes might totally collapse into a more brutal um it might we might just have to relinquish our high earning expectations and um become become asia sweatshop if the, if this if, if this is where production is if this is where power is in this current situation if at the moment the west are just fronting economic power eventually they'll be found out and the life as we know it and have known it for the for the last you know, since the post-war period, um, since we picked picked ourselves up after the war, uh, we'll be gone, and we will be sweatshop style. Um, I mean, this isn't a barbaric outcome, consider relative to now. If the workers go up a step elsewhere, but if the entire globe, um, if that becomes the norm for labor processes, that's that would be outright barbarism. I mean, fuck it. Any instance of it is barbaric. But in terms of like, um, in terms of an outcome, a possible outcome, possible total neo-feudal barbaric outcome, um, that's maybe how it could happen. And obviously, I think the, the, uh, the socialist alternative could be quite quickly summed up by, um, by saying democratize the labor processes, democratize yeah. the economy. Um, democratize, reorganize the economy so that we, well, we'll get into that later, but yeah, let's keep that one brief. Um, and Adder, we'll move on. Uh, no, I, I think, yeah, you, nothing bad on top of that. Mental conceptions of the world, embracing knowledges and cultural understanding and belief. I think we, um, we sort of touch on how fucking barbaric that's becoming um and how the potential for it to become even more barbaric um the more that the far right make parliamentary and electoral gains the more their stinking disgusting hateful um ideology that's beyond conservatism beyond a distaste for vulnerability but just yeah. seeks division seeks power through division um yeah. it will be revealed and will result or will veer closer and closer towards 
the literal um the literal uh definition of barbarism um yeah. social collapse and outright chaos and violence um i mean socialism here I mean, in addressing all the other moments we're attempting to build a a new mental conception of the world that does embrace knowledges and culture and understandings and beliefs um from everywhere and everyone um again it's ridiculous to to blame poor people for making other people poor when the subject of the thing that is lacking is also defined by the rich and we've gone over that already but uh then uh, yeah um i suppose i suppose this this comes into reimagining a um a new common sense based on what we've already gone over in the last three, particularly the first one, the, the volunteer base, the, uh, mm-hmm. the idea that the spirit, that the appreciation for, for human vulnerability and for alleviating human suffering is, is so strong. Like the cynicism that sort of surrounded earlier, that or early, early sort of mobilizations like live aid and, and stuff like that, or, or, or like daytime TV charities, um, charity ads i don't know there was there's just something so indirect about it and it it not indirect i don't i don't know there's there's something amiss there it's it's not the mainstream media reporting on human vulnerability on a 24 7 basis is it it's um there's something something a bit whiffy about it uh i never sort of bought into bought into charity we need something more fundamental than charity yeah i mean i i think uh, as i got older i suppose um i spent more time kind of i mean i never bought entirely into the idea of charity but i think by the time i was of a sort of i guess of of an age where i had this sort of mental capacity to kind of articulate what it was that didn't entirely sit solidly with me regarding it was um by then i'd i'd been able to start to come to terms with and even some of my own you know personal preconditions um that maybe were stemming from um i guess yeah like the a, a sort of i guess a liberal logic that it began to form um it was charity for me started to slowly based on where i was seeing it implemented or the people i could see kind of subscribing to the idea or it as a method was based very much on um, what did they get out of doing it, uh, whether it was emotional or, you know, well, yeah, emotional or statist, uh, statistic uh, kind of fulfillment. I just made that word up. <clears throat> um, but a kind of, a kind of fulfillment, a fulfillment of, of, of status or, or a fulfillment that informed a sense of status or a sense of who you were. Like I was uh, saying earlier on my example about um, how now you have this, this kind of uh, neighbor versus neighbor mm-hmm. uh, aggression forming because somebody buys bamboo straws and the other one doesn't, um, which is the fright is one of the frightening you know frankly most middle class sounding arguments i can imagine people having but absolutely it's one exists um people obviously get a feeling of 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 a personal fulfillment as if i've done my part yeah uh, through charity however i think and i'm not saying that this is the way it is with everybody obviously there are some people i'm you know certain individuals who absolutely feel this is this is how i can do uh my part um but for me personally uh, it always felt as if uh, it was keeping the uh, causations, the reality of the situation at an arm's length. It felt as if this is my way of kind of doing my thing or, or sorry, doing my part for, for a cause. But um, luckily, uh, in, rather than having to go and actively kind of, well, first and foremost, I, I, I'm not an expert, so I don't know anything about these, you know, world, world crisis. <clears throat> You know, that's why people in the UN deal with these things. Mm-hmm. So rather than have an active voice on these things, I can fast track that thanks to a certain system that's been set up that allows me to give X amount of money every month. And I, my assumption is that it gets there on time and they get to have water for a day. We hope. Um, and there, exactly, there is a lot of assumptions. And I, yeah. 
I think that that's my criticism of it. There's a lot of assumptions made on the, on from the point of I was going to say point of sale, but <laughs> that's that's terrible. Um, well, for Freudian Freudian slit, is it? Um, <laughs> but um, it's um, you're buying but, peace of mind. Yeah, you're exactly. A good person, you're, you're exactly. Sale. Yeah, you're. Um, it's it's a uh, it's it's something to add to a profile. It's a uh, it's a badge of honor. Um, but again, it's it's a whole ideological set of assumptions that are made on one. And and again, also thinking that the fact that these systems are in place is also a reason to not um, try to kind of create that kind of mental or emotional yeah, bridge yeah, yeah. Or connection with that suffering that we talked about. That that it it it. It, it only sort of helps to kind of collapse those bridges or, or synapses of that, that inherent ability or capacity we have for, for solidarity with other struggles and other suffering. You know, we, it's a good, uh, it's a good link to the, to the next one is social relations between people. So no one needs to be, no one needs to be a shit bag um to to sort of be an active part of the deteriorating social relations between people under capitalism we uh, that yeah fucking that was that's a, a really good explanation of why why charities and why say live aid uh things like that were such flops because because considering the the sort of stresses on any individual within within the privileged side of the, of society, um, they, they can't, they could, but they're caught between a situation where they allow themselves the, to say the belief that they can't afford to really connect with, with the human suffering that is happening. Um, and then are able to afford that because they are able to, donate and displace the um the what would otherwise be a genuine connection and um and in the, in this crisis we we have that we have a, a sort of a breakdown in capitalism that that sort of suddenly sort of reveals this uh what any sane person would um would consider healthy social relations between people um We, I mean, we've. I, I don't think we need to go into the the barbarism side of, of where of where things go here, but to say um, a sort of a dystopian, pure commodification of all social relations, of 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 the extension of current social relations to to the point where mere survival is um, predicated on your ability to cynically assess what value that other person can and people live in that situation but not necessarily in terms of survival perhaps um but like i said it's a it's a bit it's a bit sci-fi to go to that um to that extreme in terms of of barbarism i mean again we can consider our situation now quite quite barbaric except that like on on a daily basis you you walk you walk through your neighborhood and you say hello to everyone and, and that just isn't the case so um however it's an entirely an entirely different situation uh we assume would argue uh under socialism and um first off uh i think there would be the factors that sort of the factors that um draw people away from their um base social relations i suppose wouldn't be in place um a far far more sort of a democratic opportunity to live with whom you uh who you want and how you want so it's not it's not so much yeah it'd be great to live among family and friends and not have to like migrate to seek a living but not only that, once you are living with those people, it's the sort of, it's the makeup of, of those relationships that matter as well. Like, um, mm. it, like current, current, um, family relations, like the form of, of, of family 
in a contemporary situation, it, like it's, it's dysfunctional. It's, it's under so much stress. It's isolated from wider family, wider communities. Um, parents tend to have to, to work their asses off to make sure that children survive. Uh, and um, the, the stress of having to juggle a modern family situation tears relationships to shreds like um it's it's just not it's not healthy it's not ideal the, the the support system that would otherwise be in place and again this might not necessarily be like i'm not i'm not being like regressive it's like we need to go back to a historic situation where the family lived in a, a community of family and everyone supported each other which it sounds lovely to be honest but i'm not saying that that's the case that has to be the case but in this separated, isolated situation, the the bourgeois concept of relying not on people but on money is the answer, and the imperative of capitalism is working through it here. Oh, here we're totally going into the barbaric side of things, but um, people are people people families turn to the need to rely on f- higher and higher levels of income to overcome the situations that they face that come to face and that causes more stress and undermines the relationship side of things so Mm. socialism um and bringing it right back to point g the point seven the seventh one the social reproduction the one we started with on this turn um you if social reproduction was prioritized which it would be under socialism um those stresses just would not exist Uh, and particularly under a socialist application of the automation of work those social relations will become the focus of people's lives so you so you know this this is the advance on like i'm not saying i'm going i want to go back to to rely on everyone uh in some in 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 a feudal situation i don't want to rely on the community rely on the i don't want to rely on anyone I want to be able to focus on developing those relationships. I want to be able to appreciate those relationships. I don't want to have to have the stress of worrying about production lines. Of course, there's human society will never escape the concerns over production lines will always be fragile, but the artificial scarcity that is put in place by today's production, the the organization, production in today's system um is again causing is shredding social relations so mm-hmm. we put it um and i think no no i was just going to say i mean it's to your point really i think yeah the um uh i i would probably put myself in a very similar position where yeah i i don't uh i'm not i wouldn't want i'm i wouldn't it's not that I'm encouraging a return to a, a, a sort of mentality or, or a moment of where you, you just rely on everybody, but I think it's the, the, the myriad of benefits that come, I feel, um, from a stronger sense of, um, I don't want to just stop at community because I feel like community could also be kind of taken as being a little well i mean there's there's very you know there's various ways you can interpret the the the, i guess the the idea of community as such um i mean this i guess in a very um a much more kind of well i guess in the context of what we're talking about a more so in a socialistic uh sense um the the myriad of not only like material benefits that can come with that from a kind of stronger sense of social bonds with with your neighbor Mm. um you know based on whether it's i am a family you know you're also you also constitute their support that you know but yeah the the emotional um and 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 i guess spiritual psychological benefits um not necessarily as an individualistic benefit i mean they are individual benefits to the individual but i mean the benefit as in a sense of what um, what you all have individuals, like the impact of all the individuals on the greater group as well Absolutely. in that regard. And I mean that, you know, 
definitely being, uh, uh, you know, from that a huge sense of openness and connectedness with people, uh, a sense of, you know, I don't want to say, I guess, a, a sense of safety, um, not in a sort of like, we're, we're together, we're a pack and, and something is out there, um, but in a, a sense of, I guess, more a feeling of, of, I don't know, it's kind of like the opposite of like a kind of nervous energy that I yeah, think yeah, kind yeah. of we, we have naturally. Security. Kind of buzzing. Yeah, security. Thank you. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, and what, you know, what that unlocks then later on down the line, yeah, yeah, when yeah. suddenly those conditions are met for all of us, both on an individual level, as well as being part of a larger um, a larger unit or, or larger connectedness or a large, you know, not, I guess, larger creates this kind of solid shape. Uh, whereas I'm talking about something a bit more fluid. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But what, what that unlocks later on down the line, what that encourages, you know, and what it allows and, people to do. Exactly. Um, you know, the way that it starts to change, um, you know, how you also how you then react to these kind of ideas um you know we've talked about it before on on i think several occasions where well, i mean we've talked about in this chat this in this um this idea of an inherent kind of ability to um this uh, uh, inherent like capability to understand and acknowledge suffering in others and and also feel a sim like not a sympathy but like a yeah like a, an ability to to um yeah, not sympathy. It's more of a, a, an ability to acknowledge empathy. Um, no? So empathy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't know. My, it's my it's my brain. My brain is shutting down now as well. Um, but I also feel that you know this kind of there are certain things that I also feel that are certain other inherencies that maybe there you know I have nothing material to found this on except for just I guess how I've you know grown up myself, how I've observed my own being, mm -hmm. um, and also people around me. Um, but with regarding to my psychology, uh, regarding work, um, you know, I've definitely started to develop this sense of like an inherent creativity and innovativeness that humans have. Um, but I don't use them strict in a sense of creativity as in the arts and innovation as in like, um, uh, I guess when, when I hear the word innovation, especially because of the atmosphere I'm around most of the time, it's usually associated with meritocracies. Whereas what I would kind of encourage innovation to be is like, I, I kind of see it as something that can be achieved collectively when it's done in a socialistic sense or, you know, an, innov an innovation can be something that benefits a, uh, you know, a community rather than a single entity and maybe a process. Is, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Collaboration. And that, collaboration and that process then can be democratized. It's not something that is privatized as an idea, like a piece of intellectual property, and then is kind of drip fed or sold gradually to people. Um, you know, I think I start to have these, uh, start, I've started to formulate just a feel, a gut feeling really what it's all based on. And I'd love to flesh out the ideas more with uh, an actual look into some work based around these similar ideas, but this creativity that we, you know, we, 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 we are drawn towards the idea of problem solving, um, and innovating like, yeah, problem solving, but also being able to problem solve things on a much larger scale, um, i.e. for a community rather than just on a base level. I feel, I feel that these inheritances kind of, can exist and can function wonderfully um and 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 on a, on a and could be could be blown out on a much larger scale but because of that common sense because of this now you know the common sense of neoliberalism the There's logic a lack of, of incentive capitalism. isn't there yes exactly um and coupling that with what we were talking about with regards to community and what um that security allows people to do but also then how it starts to change how you think about what you want to do how other people could be involved or how can you yeah, be involved holistic i mean it's the mental yeah. conception of the world isn't it that this yeah. the um because i think what the, the 
the point, the the moment before we get to sort of um, that key initial moment um, is relations in nature. And um, I mean, it almost, I mean, it goes without saying that the, you would hope a socialist, the relations of nature under socialism. I mean, bar, the, the barbarism of of capitalist relations of nature is on our doorstep. Uh, another one or two or three degrees of global warming, and the gas in the air ignites, and <laughs> we it rains fire. <laughs> um, I mean, that's not even barbarism anymore. That's that's something more primeval and um, ecological. But that so yeah, it's a given that that that. That under socialism in relations to nature would, would would be would be far. I mean, it's not it's not anti-industrial as such, but it's the the processes of industrialization um, have to be married with respect to our limits um, impacting on the um, environment and u- using sort of a, a scientific led um, approach to that and ensuring that there are checks against exceeding beyond those limits and and that we that we aren't that we're living within our means mm. that we're not living on borrowed time uh, of generations hey if i mean if we can even save the situation as it stands um so yeah that's absolutely probably... i mean the earth doesn't burn away and then you're left with a uh, a, a factory <laughs> planet <laughs> Or yeah, I mean, like you, it it fades to black, Fucking doesn't it? Like if the factories were left after the destruction, the climate change might there'd be nothing but that's, to put in but the that's, factory. But that's what I mean. What I'm what I'm trying to underpin, it, or yeah, what I'm like trying to kind of like I guess underline this. Yeah, this mm-hmm. idea that um, it's 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 with it's not necessarily completely doing away with with some of you know some of the the outcomes of these innovations that you know have led to industrial revolution etc and onwards but it's it's from that having a sterner or having a more informed um, understanding of as you said the impact that by going completely unregulated um, you know we are you know slowly teetering off the coil um so to speak um you know even considering that you know you can you can pay now to pollute the air in a country that's not your own that the whole concept to me is fucking terrifying yeah that's even something that we've that's something that you can pay to do even when the logic (laughs) attempts to um not necessarily internalize the costs but to deal with the costs um it's fucking stupid um but i I wanted to skip skip like that it's such an obvious um and well rehearsed point uh obviously not in among circles who really need to be rehearsing it but um to get to the um to continue with your point within the moment of technological and organizational forms production exchange and consumption um the i mean this this sort of this, I, I'm conscious that a lot of 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 what I've been saying or what we've been saying, but some of the sort of where I've gone with a few of them ha- haven't been, you know, necessarily Marxist or or uh, anti-capitalist. The idea of of human vulnerability and um, the moral um, sort of dimension to things is is something a lot of people argue that came came later. But I feel in terms of socialism wider the wider world of socialism um these things are absolutely relevant and throughout the chat and particularly this last moment um the capitalist or the anti-capitalist emphasis exists within the, the same so you know so in terms of the arguments that we've looked at over these last six chats the the um the questions over predominance of capitalism as a, as par- being paradigmatic uh, in our society, um, the the questions over the need for a, a radical break or or sort of a redetermination of the meaning of I- I freedom and equality in inner society, um, just sort of t- t- the arguments that we've looked at, um, how important capitalism. Or anti-capitalism should or should not be to um, 
to socialism uh, or to the left. And I think, I mean, I'd argue that like, um, even if we situate capitalism as a section within, um, within this, this wider scope for, for consideration by the left, it's still, it's still key. I mean, it's, it's like, the, even if it's merely embedded and not embedding, I think Zizek would, everything's embedded in it. Uh, he'd argue that. But even if we frame things in terms of um, a wider historic social order that is the subject of conservation, if um, once we breach capitalism, we're met with heavy, violent repression, which would suggest that it's not necessarily capitalism that is the the subject of conservation. It's 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 the social order. It, it, it pre-existed um, capitalism that drove the the sort of that drove people toward that logic of capitalism. And um, and it seems that like when we're actually talking about the process of the logic of capitalism is still sort of rampant, but the actual the processes of what is considered capitalism might not even be in effect anymore, as we've already covered. Um, so it, yeah. So so I just wanted to sort of like caveat, I guess, the the conversation in terms of like, yeah, the emphasis hasn't been strictly Marxist uh, or anti-capitalist, but I, I really don't think it needs to be because I think that that moral consideration. Is a, is a very important regulative uh, idea. It, it gives order and reason to um, an impassioned, an emotional order and reason to uh, to to one's motivations to to pursue these ideas and actions, um, while still treating it as incredibly integral to why we're in the situations that we're in, and yes. Returning then to the final point, the technological organization forms of production, exchange, and consumption. Um, capitalists want to make a book. They want to. Uh, they want to keep doing it. They want to keep. They want to. They want to maintain their livelihood. They want to maintain their status, and they want to, The only way to maintain the status is to increase it. Is to always seek to increase it. If you're not increasing it, you will you will lose it, right. and there's no there's no pause. And I think that's Meeksons would um, her imperative that she spoke about that we touched on last time. Um, so that's why it's got to go forward. The um, that impels capitalists, unless they want to opt out and become wage labor, it impels them to continuously expand or increase or increase the capacity to increase their margin profit and with the with the amount of technology we have today it just seems like there's no way without socialism that automation will be applied in a way that will benefit anyone but the individual that applies that technology. Yeah. And with so few people in a position to apply technology with direct access to the means of production, that means very few people will benefit under capitalism from automation. Yeah. This will organize production, exchange, and consumption in profound and fundamental and barbarous ways this this is this is where we find that we're returning to lords and i mean i don't even know if i don't even know why i don't even know why they would consider in in a situation that potentially posits so much power in so few hands, why they would consider the welfare at all in the strictest sense of people uh, in terms of their ability to continue living. 
um, in the past, in feudalism, they grew carrots, <laughs> you know, and that was great because someone needed to grow the fucking carrots for the powerful so they could keep living because they weren't going to do it. But now they've got robots to grow the carrots. <laughs> they don't need fucking people to grow the carrots. And, um, and this is, this is the, like it, you can't sort of hammer home enough the, the imperative, the compulsion of the system to drive producers, producers, the owners of production to that point. Mm-hmm. Because in the short term, what you, you, you you describe it in the macro like that and it's like what the fuck are you on about but if you put it down to the short term the economy is broken down into making a, a higher return in as quick amount of time as possible by say even a million people across the planet whatever an arbitrary number not very many relatively speaking but enough that the entire um, operation of it is diffuse Mm-hmm. and they're acting in isolation and all the decisions they're making to make as quickly as possible in uh, as much as possible um, brings their decision making scope into the short term they want to valorize their investment their capital investment like tomorrow um, they don't under capitalism we don't get the they don't get the opportunity they're not afforded the the foresight the long-term foresight that's necessary to see how to keep the system moving and sustaining it for themselves it'll eat its own tail it will undermine its own situation um because and again it's not it's not out of malevolence it's not out of evil it's just out of the short-term incentive that everyone there's just there's a, there's an inherent entropy to the system, and this this relate that relates back to the um, the lack of production and the intervention of the state to keep it going. But because of specific ideologies, the way the state will keep it going is is the difference between life and death for many people under the Tory or not under the Tories under neoliberalism. Um, that means more death than life than under social democracy. Um, but I mean, regardless, why, why pit ourselves in this struggle between between one type of state and the other type of state, and then between the state and capital? As it's just this imperative. Back to the imperative again. Back to the compulsion. You can't stay steady. You've got to constantly expand. Why are we? It's like running an engine on like first gear because it's easy or something but you're going to knacker the engine. It just, it's just a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like orthodox economics for quite some time had a lot of cultural purchase because, you know, it was able to present itself as rational, as um, empirically based, as, as um, just, just, a good idea but i mean in actually like that's just because people weren't reading marx when they were studying economics it's a bad idea and it it it, it lifted millions out of poverty particularly you know the, the in in china like it, it does generate wealth but in terms of and we've treated i suppose i've treated there that the barbarism uh the potential for extended and more radical barbarism the um the alternative the socialist alternative is uh we can with with technology and i'm not talking about automation but communication we can and revert returning back to human um human vulnerability need social reproduction um put all those elements together and uh we could construct a compass for the economy. We don't need the market. If, if, if what, if what the market means is 
it will eventually eat its own tail, burn the entire planet to a crisp, shred relationships apart. In terms of mental conceptions, actually produce some evil fucking people in power and put them in power. Um, form, no, that doesn't matter. Uh, and, and totally undermine um, the general ability to social reproduction. Uh, scrap that, bin it. Democratize and localize production. Um, limit exchange to use value instead of exchange value. Um, consume and relate to nature within um, scientifically guided uh, limits that that we fucking that are available to us. Use your spare time to to love one another, <laughs> to love people. Um, see the world through that through that renewed enthusiasm and and the affording of 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 positive empathy see the world in a better place as as a better place in in a better way in where you get to afford to not just the immediate people but to see beyond them and to see to 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 appreciate otherness mm. the fucking wonders of things that are different to you be become so secure allow ourselves to become so secure that we're able this is what you were touching on a minute ago to be able to appreciate instead of fear things that are different to us work yeah of course we're going to work like absolutely um or automate utter mundaneness automate our necessities automate what we can but that that doesn't negate our ability but also our need to work no, absolutely not. I mean, I think um, I think we touched on this before. Maybe it wasn't an online chat, but I think we touched on um, the, I guess, what I was kind of getting at earlier on about this idea of um, of creativity and innovativeness that I feel can be are 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 slowly kind of you know I feel inherent in human in humans. Um, I feel that where that starts to meet, um, I guess not just, where, sorry, what I was getting at about this idea of how, how this, these approaches, um, you know, can, can benefit, uh, you know, at a, at a more civilizational, you know, societal level um, is where it stops. I, I feel it, it stops necessarily being solely, composed in in the camp of just work and it actually starts to slowly filter more into how we live mm -hmm. um, yeah we yeah, live yeah. yeah we start to exist creatively we mm -hmm. start to live and think um innovatively and that can be from a you know not just from a how do i get a better purchase on everything that's around me it's more how how do we you know is that idea just just even from a you're sitting on your chair at home and is this idea something that elevates um everybody around me because this would just be a better fucking option for us and that i feel is it's it filters into what you're saying this approach of not just trying to get this this because you know there's so much about the way we live and work today and how we relate to other people um, and other and everything that comes with that culture idea um that as you said it's it's an otherness but it's an otherness that we kind of feel we need to get a better purchase on or we need to get a good understanding of it so we can kind of keep it at arm's length yeah yeah absolutely so to speak. but that it's a, you know, a that, cognitive rather than an emotional relationship exactly and i f i i have a feeling you know this this in the in the kind of very integral changes that might come with how we start to relate to life, how we start to relate to work um, through the kind of, the kind of transition we're talking about um, and have been talking about. Yeah. It absolutely starts to filter into all those incredible things you've just listed off, you know, um, it's the moment. Yeah. 
they, I mean, like skipping over the uh, governmental one, the um, second last one, uh, f- focus the economy on reproduction or on production for reproduction instead of reproduction for production. Um, and uh, and then yeah, the, I suppose the uh, that the f- the final one then is um, is the political um, is how how to how to sort of go about that, and I think Harvey's conception of the co-revolutionary theory of change is to recognise that any given social movement operates not necessarily strictly, but often strictly within one or a part of one mm-hmm. of these moments. And it's, it's just returning to the start. Like it's deadly necessary to see the interdependence between them and the need to be interdependent um, as movements that whether you're identifying as left or whatever, um, that, that seeks to punch upwards that, that can correctly identify and attribute uh, where relationships of power are impinging and halting these changes from happening. Um, I don't care what, what you call yourself as long as as you're sort of dedicated to to holding that power to account, to challenging it, and to try to negotiate democratically how to draw that power down and disperse it. left and right is just a disagreement in a historic moment that's been extrapolated, confused, diffused, um, complicated and manifests in a million in, a, in an array. But ultimately it doesn't matter in, in, in a, in a, in moves radical democratic situation, as long as you're not determining your actions to end that radical situation through an existential threat to presenting an existential threat or to attempting to amass so much of that power that um that you get to determine the meaning of every social coordinate uh within the system but moves to radical democracy it doesn't matter left right whatever you're going to have disagreements everyone's going to have disagreements we always want to have disagreements so it but as long as it's democratic, the, the the opportunity to sort of to articulate your position and to be able to um, to determine why one relationship or why a relationship should be sort of one way or the other is is the sort of is the is the value in that democratic situation. Uh, in order to get there, we've just got to punch up. We've got to we've got to hit that power so that it falls down, and. Um, I think this is this is the sort of in each of these moments it's the key to um the key to sort of articulating how that that interdependence is appreciated by movements that seek to punch upwards is the chain of equivalence mm-hmm. but this doesn't take away from the concept of universal the universal subject it it from these chats that we've had to my mind sort of um it's a way of achieving a particularist 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 um universal that uh, is a means and not an end mm-hmm. um through through things like what we've discussed the the mapping of the universal mapping of um, instead of instead of using Google to show beautiful pictures, use something like Google to internationally uh, express pieces of art or literature, whatever um, stories of subjugation, inspire connections with people um, show, show the sort of the human vulnerability that we all do have in common and how sort of, how we how to 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 outside of any given one of these moments, whatever sort of issue you might have within them, and um, that are experiences, there is a commonality there. And um, yeah, like I said, inspire inspire those connections through through that method. Um, you're getting your ch- you're you're equivalating those issues. Um, you're building a chain. 
and you're mounting a hegemonic struggle against the hegemonic the hegemonic situation that is in place um the right were able to do it to an extent but i think if the left were to get in gear in this respect there's fucking no stopping them like 